America's political leaders continue in many places to impose lockdown, some extreme, on the public well after, long after scientific evidence is accumulated to show pretty conclusively that they don't work very well. But politicians are in no hurry to get back to normal and give up the power they've accrued. Their livelihoods are safe, even guaranteed by taxpayers. They're ignoring the rules they enforce themselves, and they enjoy that. Last night on CNN, Governor Andrew Cuomo's brother, who's got a show there, shamed Americans for daring to step outside without a mask. Nearly 100,000 Americans dead, and this president is playing games over Joe Biden wearing a mask, not to mention millions of other Americans now doing the same. How about the clowns who are ready to double down on the death toll because they want to get their party on for the holiday? I could show you example after example after example of people acting like fools, not just, you know, not having any sense for their own safety, but the safety of others. Do you want to read a, wear a mask? No. But is it that big a deal? Not really. So you're immoral if you don't wear a mask. The funny thing is that the weightlifting correspondent you just saw wasn't wearing a mask of his own when he was screaming at a cyclist last month, and he was infected. I just said, don't you have the coronavirus? Shouldn't you be quarantined? And um, I think his next words were, uh, what the hell do you know about this? What do you know about the rules? And I said, you're not supposed to be out here. Nobody had gloves on. Nobody had masks on. So we aired that on TV. It's widely known that that guy wasn't wearing a mask and he had the coronavirus. Kind of weird he's lecturing other people about it. Would you be able to do that or would the hypocrisy just corrode your soul to the point you could no longer speak? Ask yourself. And then there's Governor Gretchen Whitmer of Michigan. Before Memorial Day, she ordered her citizens not to vacation in the Traverse City area. Now, our big fear, of course, is that Memorial Day weekend, we know lots of people love to go north. A small spike could be really, could put that hospital system in dire straits pretty quickly. And that's precisely why we are asking everyone to continue doing their part. Don't descend on Traverse City from all regions of the state. Yeah. Don't go to Traverse City, it's dangerous. At almost exactly the moment that Governor Whitmer was saying that her husband was using the fact he was married to her to pressure a small business into putting the family's boat in the water ahead of the holiday. Now, Whitmer originally denied that even happened. She lied, she called it a hoax. Then she was exposed, it was obviously real. So now she says it was a bad joke. But it wasn't a hoax and it wasn't a joke, it was pure repulsive hypocrisy. And the Whitmers weren't alone in committing that. Two weeks ago, Wisconsin Supreme Court struck down the governor's lockdown. Justice Rebecca Dallet dissented. She said, quote, Wisconsinites will pay the price for going outside. But she didn't mean it. None of them really mean it. We know because over Memorial Day, that same person, Dallet, went boating with at least four friends, not wearing a mask, not social distancing. Oh, lockdown for thee, but not for me. Since leaders won't give Americans their rights back, it falls to ordinary Americans to reclaim them. Michael Peslak owns Patriot Axe Throwing in Hickory, North Carolina. He's suing the governor of that state, Roy Cooper, over his executive orders imposing a state lockdown. Michael Peslak joins us along with his attorney, Height Philbeck. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Michael, let me ask Thank you Kevin. first. Um, you have been closed, I think, in, because of this lockdown. Why are you reopening? Why do you think that you can and should reopen? Well, <clears throat> well we're reopening because we've lost so much revenue that uh, uh, we're going to either have to close our business for good or, uh, or reopen the doors and, and kind of face the consequences. So uh, th that's the reason that we've kind of went forward and uh, decided to go ahead and reopen and um, just start trying to serve our patrons that we uh, that, that we had. <clears throat> so you have no choice, I, I guess, is what you're saying. I mean, the governor is, it sounds like, driving you out of business. Uh, yes, sir. And, and um, that, that, that's, the, that's our main issue here is that, um, you know, we got a governor uh, in North Carolina that uh, is wanting to, wanting to be the king here. And, and uh, we can't just let that stand. You know, I served in the United States Army for 10 years. I got two deployments to Afghanistan. And what's funny about all this is that the government trusted me enough uh, that they would allow me to fly a multi-million dollar aircraft 
uh, yeah. with 15 people in the back, but they don't trust me enough to operate my business safely uh, in Hickory, North Carolina. And <clears throat> at the end of the day, uh, I, I'm not being allowed to uh, provide for my family and make a living. Yeah. Your business looks a lot safer than an abortion clinic, which I haven't been close to. So, Height, let me ask you, on what, on what legal grounds are you challenging this lockdown? Well, Governor Cooper has issued some fairly wide range uh, far-reaching executive orders. Now, executive orders that uh, legislate or make law rather than merely enforce the law are unconstitutional. Right. And, uh, you know, in, it's a fundamental precept in representational democracy that there be a separation of powers and that yep. the legislative branch be the one that make the law and the executive branch, and here, the, in this case, this is the governor, <clears throat> be the one to merely enforce the law. Well, Governor Cooper is using the emergency powers to declare a state of emergency. And there's no criteria or qualification or even definition what a state of emergency is. So any elected governor can declare a state of emergency in their discretion arbitrarily. And it can have such wide ranging, as we see in Mike's case, uh, effects on businesses and livelihoods uh, on people and harm people uh, oh, with with, with the, the scope of what it can do, what a governor can do just on their own. And then it can last indefinitely. Only when the governor says that, well, there's no longer a state of emergency, with no checks on that decision, uh, can, uh, will it end? And it's just the, the framers never intended for a, one, any one person to have such immense power <laughs> no, on the lives and liberties of others. There's no provision in the Constitution for a God law where some politician declares himself God and can do whatever he wants forever. So thank you for challenging this. Mike, thank you for coming on. An axe throwing business has to be the coolest kind of business, and so we're rooting for you. Good luck. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Take care.